many of you have heard that expression, show not tell? Well, if you're wondering what it means, it is fairly to the point, show rather than tell. If you're watching a movie, then how often does the narrator say, George is sad? Do they really do that? In movies, they try not to have to tell you things. They would cut to a shot of George with his face like that, or crying or whatever, something dramatic, right? Well, the thing is, when you're writing, you don't necessarily have the awesome cinematography and the ability to just throw a video on the page, so how can you do that with words, which have been around longer? So, surely you can find a way to do that, right? Well, the way that you do that is something called show, not tell. Instead of taking the easy way out and just writing all the time when you want to tell your readers something so and so is blank, try to show it. So if someone's sad, maybe they're sitting slumped in the corner. Maybe they're kind of lonely, so they're trying to seek out attention, or maybe they're lonely and, and because of something they've done themselves. Or if someone's happy, instead of saying they are happy, um, say they were jumping up and down ecstatically, a wide smile on their face, something like that. So show not tell is essentially just using uh, more visual imagery to create uh, an image for your reader as opposed to just telling them. And it makes for a lot more interesting writing too. And the second thing that is uh, good to know is something, is something called figurative language. So those of you who have heard about figurative language, probably you've encountered it when you're analyzing pieces of literature. Figurative language is really easy to find. Um, you might find similes. So an example of a simile would be her teeth were white as snow. Also a cliche a little bit. Or maybe um, her nostrils were as gaping as the... Grand Canyon, okay, that's not a good simile at all. It's also very insulting to anyone whose nostrils you're comparing to the Grand Canyon, but you get the idea of what a simile is. It's basically comparing one thing to another thing. And generally, uh, you're obviously not saying that anyone's nostrils are literally the size of the Grand Canyon, but the derived meaning of that is her nostrils were really big. So if you want to say something, but you want to give it a little more oomph, then you can go for a simile. But when you're doing that, you also want to make sure that you don't run into cliches. Cliches are things that have been used so much that they become overused and kind of trite. So stay away from her lips were red as roses, her teeth were white as pearls, anything that sounds like it might have appeared two dozen times in a Disney movie already. Metaphors are a little trickier. Um, well, I mean, depending on your point of view, metaphors are uh, actually literally saying that one thing is another thing. So, for instance, like the king was a lion. Obviously, the king is not a lion unless you're watching The Lion King or something, but it's um, imbuing the qualities of one thing to another thing without um, saying was like or was as blank as a. So if it was a simile, you would say something like, the king was as brave as a lion. But if it's a metaphor, you are just saying directly, the king is a lion. And then the reader is left to assume, okay, what are lions? They're like in charge of things, or they're brave, or whatever else lions are. Uh, then you take and you use that to describe a king. So metaphors and similes are examples of figurative language. They can be great ways to describe things when you don't want to just say, boringly, the king is brave, or the girl is nice, or something like that. You can use similes and metaphors to give your writing more oomph, and remember to show, not tell when you can. Thanks for watching.